Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to episode 284, Experiencing Loss and Grief. Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. So y'all, I have some news and I might cry a little bit, but um, my Edie girl, Edie, the one that you hear on the podcast, um, maybe shaking her collar or snoring or making some noises has passed and it happened last Friday. So it's been five days and it was excruciating and we are so sad and we are missing her terribly and it was a very hard decision although it was a decision that I knew that we were going to have to make sooner than later and we had actually been talking about it with the family and really exploring it um, for several months. And my husband, bless him, had tried so much to keep her going um, in these past couple months. And it just became very apparent in the last week that um, she is not having a good time anymore. And she was suffering and in a lot of pain and having difficult walking and eating and really high anxiety and a lot of other things. But... So we made that decision and we were fortunate enough that it wasn't an emergency. So we were able to schedule it with a wonderful vet in our home with all of the kids and little Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Pooh around us and got to see her go on another journey. And I am doing okay. It's just when I talk about her and think about her. I get sad because she was amazing. She was really awesome. And she was the first pet, like not the first pet, but the first dog that we had in our family with the kids. And we tried a couple dogs before getting Edie. And Edie's the one that won because of her amazing gentleness, her patience, She had, we adopted her from a rescue and she was probably six or seven years old when we adopted her and it looked like, you know, she had a rough life. She looked like she had multiple litters of puppies. She had some scars on her ear and her lips. And we knew that she had been through a few homes with the rescue. But when she came to us, we knew that she could fit in. We had a cat. We had three very young kids at the time. They were like three or four, five or six, and like seven or eight at the time. And so it was a lot to come into that. But Edie did. And we loved her so much. We still do. And my kids learned how to have an animal. They learned how to take care of an animal. They learned how to connect with something and love something and to care for something and see that thing age and go through this process and see it all the way through and they understood what real grief is and we've been moving through that this past few days and when you make those decisions you know I mean at least I knew it was the right thing to do I've had animals my whole life I this I this is not the first time that I've had to do this before um So I knew what to expect and everything, and it still did not make it one bit easier. (laughs) Whether you know how it is or you don't, it is excruciating to go through. And it was a hard weekend, Um, especially the next day when I'm sitting with myself in the morning outside of my patio 
with her dog bed right there where she would sit with me and lay with me in the morning while I did my journaling and drank my coffee and listened to the birds and just sitting there and, and processing this loss was super hard and beautiful and it uh, took a lot out of me and um, you know I'm talking with the kids about their feelings and what they're going through and you know it was a big deal so we are missing Edie (laughs) if you have memories of Edie listening to the podcast or saw her on a coaching call send her lots of love she is somewhere chasing squirrels and eating anything that she could possibly get her little mouth on she loved peanut butter she loved licking the um peanut butter jar like an empty peanut butter jar would always get um Edie's tongue in there (laughs) to clean it out before the jar went in the recycling she loved apple chunks and apple cores she loved carrots those are her three favorite things And then literally whatever else you wanted to give her, she would gladly take. Every time we would um, chop dinner food or chop food on the cutting board, she would come running. And she was so pesky and so annoying about wanting to get some of that stuff. And I miss that. I miss her snores. And um, yeah, she's just, she was a lovely dog. And when you love something like that, it's normal to go through the grieving and the loss process of it. And I only am crying now, five days later, when I think about her. And it's, um, it's sort of like a joyful, beautiful, loving cry. And usually it happens when I'm really quiet, or I'm talking about her. Um, But the other sense in the house is that it was the right decision because she was suffering. And it was a lot of work for us to manage her and what she needed to. So all of that is gone, right? Like all of the extra work that we had to do. And I don't even want to frame that up as, as if that's a good thing. It's just different. Um, it's just not there. That presence isn't there and it's missed. So anyway, you guys have, <laughs> heard her on this podcast for years. I mean, ever since I've been recording this podcast, Edie has been in the picture. So I wanted you all to know about that. And honestly, (laughs) I don't even know. Um, What else I need to tell you right now? Grief is interesting. It comes and goes. There's no timeline on it. You know, I did a grief episode around losing my grandmother in July of 2020. We will link that up in the show notes, but I got very emotional on that podcast episode too, because it's hard to not get emotional when you're talking about something personal that you've lost or that you're grieving. I coach a lot of people on grief and loss. And most of the time, the biggest problem that people have around grief and loss is that they think that they should be over something by now. They think that they shouldn't be feeling this way, or it's been years. Um, and there's still, it still affects them. And the thing is, there is no process or timeline on grief and loss. When you feel grief and loss, it's because you love something or were connected to something or someone profoundly. And sometimes that doesn't mean love or you know, something like Edie or a grandparent that you adored, right? It could be an estranged parent or sibling or something like that where, you know, you didn't have a good relationship or a relationship, but it still affects you years later, right? It doesn't have to be only with people that you were super close to. So if you've experienced loss and you have gone through grief, you know that it pops in randomly at times. I mean, you know, for me and my grandmothers that I lost both of them in 2020, you know, when I'm walking in the woods or I'm having those quiet reflective moments, I think about them, you know, or something will grab my attention that makes me think of them. And it makes me cry, you know, and I grieve that. And I think about how much they loved me. And that makes me cry. And it's not that it's sad. It's just 
the feelings that what happens when you think about somebody or something or a pet that is no longer with you, right? So I just wanted to share that with you um, and to not judge yourself if you are still grieving something and you've experienced loss with a pet or a loved one or a strange relative or somebody that was important to you. If you are still, if that still pops up and you still get sad about that, that's okay. Work on accepting those feelings and allowing those feelings to come through, breathing through it, letting yourself cry. When we try to set that aside and we compartmentalize that, it causes other problems. And a lot of people, a lot of my clients have had significant loss. I mean, if you reach a certain age in your life, you're going to have loss, right? This is a part of being alive. And learning how to be with those feelings and allowing them, even though they're excruciatingly painful, like physically painful, right? Learning how to allow and let yourself go there is important because if you don't, that creates other problems. This is where people drink. If you drink from this type of pain, right, to numb out these deep caverns of pain (laughs) that you experience in your body, If you drink to fill that up or to numb that or escape that or to not think about it, um, it's going to cause other issues for you, right? And then you're starting to train your brain that you need alcohol whenever you have a discomfort, a feeling that doesn't feel good. You're like, ooh, let's do that again. Let's do that again. In this situation, maybe it's boredom now. Maybe it's frustration. Maybe it's not grief and loss on a regular basis, but it's moving on to other more difficult feelings, to be with. And then you have the big problem of solving the over drinking, right? And undoing that. And then also we've got to still feel those feelings that under are underneath it. All right. And um, also, I just want to say, however you have dealt with it in the past is fine. There's no right or wrong way to deal with it. And acknowledging that drinking or doing some other numbing behavior is an actual tool that helps us feel better in that moment, right? It's just not the most healthiest tool. It doesn't have (laughs) long-term healthy results for us. Whereas if you can learn the tool of processing these feelings and being willing to be with these feelings, that actually can help you because it expands your capacity for discomfort. And so when unexpected things happen, like death and loss and something tragic, you know you won't fall apart you know that you will be able to handle it. And knowing that about yourself is supremely powerful, right? I knew when we were making this decision that yes, this is gonna be hard and painful, but I never thought I couldn't handle it, right? I know that if something tragic and happens, I will be able to handle that because of my capacity to feel these very difficult feelings that I have. When my grandmother's died in 2020, I wasn't drinking then either. I was two years into not drinking. And that was um, the first deepest pain that I had felt sober. And working through that and feeling that, and still to this day working through that and feeling that, um, has been worth it 100% because it helps you move through it faster, actually, the, the, the very painful parts. And it helps you connect with yourself. It helps you connect with the love that you had for that person or that animal or that thing. And it's a beautiful thing to be alive, to experience those types of range of feelings. And I'm thankful that I'm sad about my dog. You know why? Because it means that I loved her and I was connected to her at a very deep level. Same thing with my grandparents. And when I think about it like that, I'm like, I want to be present for that. I want to be so present and connected to the things that matter to me. And I know that that comes with a price on the other side when something happens. And I want to be here for all of it. That's what I describe as being alive. I am alive AF. I am present AF. I am here and willing to experience and witness myself and the other thing I'm connected with go through something together. And if I was dead or not alive, I would not get to experience this. And so I can't pick and choose what feelings (laughs) 
<laughs> like it to have, right? It's like you can't feel that love and connection with something without the contrast of the grief and the loss. Like it just can't exist without each other. And so I'm going to wrap up the podcast here today. Be open to expanding your discomfort around these deeper feelings. Be open to not judging yourself when you have difficult feelings and when they come up in like inappropriate times, like when you're trying to record a podcast for thousands of people and you start crying. <laughs> you know, imagine if our if our world in our world, if that was okay and accepted. Like I know you you as my listener are like feeling for me and connecting with me, right? Like we're having a moment right now, like a real human moment. And you're not judging me. You're not telling me that I shouldn't cry on a podcast, right? And if you are, I you need some support, <laughs> right? Um, our world would be better if more people were more open about sharing how they feel. And displaying their feelings, especially around grief and loss and having more flexibility with people when they're going through very difficult things, right? And not demanding them to be as functional or productive or whatever when they experience loss. So if you are working in a corporation or a school or working for somebody else and you have, you know, employees or um, coworkers or anybody that has gone through significant loss, whether it's a pet or a family member, love them, just be patient and know that it's not a linear process of these stages of grief that people talk about. It just doesn't work like that. And everybody is unique and different. And so if you can have a little bit of empathy for them, a little bit of empathy for yourself, if it doesn't look the way you think it should and learn how to connect with yourself and be appreciative that you're alive and you get to feel the range of feelings because you were so connected to something. All right, my beautiful friends, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I appreciate all of your comments, thoughts, texts, emails, comments, and sentiments around Edie. It has meant a lot for me to share her with you, you know, and be willing for her to be here in this podcast for years, shaking her collar (laughs) and snoring, or maybe even barking sometimes. So all my love to you, and we will talk to you next week. I want you to check out AngelaMasonic.com forward slash Alive AF. You know what it's like to have a desire to cut back on your drinking, right? You start to read books, listen to podcasts, try things, but you might not be able to yet put all the pieces and suggestions together in a way that actually makes sense and works for you. You might struggle with beating yourself up after an overdrink. You might get frustrated with yourself when you take two steps forward and then another two steps back and get overwhelmed with what's right and wrong about your relationship with alcohol. Your friends tell you that you should be able to have just one drink and it isn't a big deal. You might be white knuckling through urges and resisting instead of peacefully processing them. And you might struggle with your identity as someone who has enjoyed having a lot of wine or alcohol in your life. It's around you all the time. It's what you do and who you are. Well, after five years of successfully coaching hundreds of women through these struggles, I have created the Alive AF membership where women like you can learn the basics on what it takes to cut back and reach your goals with alcohol, whether it is to just drink less or totally quit. And when you join, you will get the exact framework I used to change my own relationship with alcohol and still use today that has led me to be alcohol free for over five years. You're going to get access to my resources, videos, and worksheets that have been proven to change and reduce how much you drink. Every day you can ask questions, share your obstacles, and get coaching and direct support on the challenges you will face with love and no judgment. Also, you will get immediate access to workshops like uncovering your alcohol identity and changing it, how to say no to things that don't support your new identity or life or goals, aka boundaries, (laughs) a workshop called creating emotional agency, and another one, how to manage your mind to succeed at your goals and more. Every month we have a brand new workshop. These workshops are filled with step-by-step prompts and instruction to help you create the exact relationship with alcohol that is best for you. 
My mission and vision for Alive AF is to be a hub of support and resources for women to come and learn how to do what is best for them and becoming more alive in the process. When you join, you're going to learn how to take care of yourself better, how to feel good and become more alive and go after the life that you really want. I want this membership to be affordable and an easy solution where you can get all the help you need in one simple place whenever you need it. So no need to go read another book, find a new podcast, attend a free webinar, or go down the path of piecemealing it all together. Join Alive AF and have it all there in one place for you anytime you need it. So go to angelamasenic.com forward slash Alive AF and enrollment is open right now. See you inside. Thank you.